Okay, here we go. This is a serenade for all of you in this gorgeous, gorgeous, sunny once. Play. It's on. Thank you. 
My name is Tania Kusan Espinosa from Kusan Theatre. I work under the name of Kusan Theatre. Um, I am here at the allotment because it's really where I have spent all this time um, as the work kind of dried up completely. The theatre work and the dance work and all of that has gone completely. So I have used the allotment as my 
refuge and as a way of reflecting and kind of um, thinking of what next, what to do next. Um, I was born in Colombia, but my family is from different places. My father was born in Prague and my grandfather was Italian and my grandmother Polish. My mother is Colombian, so my, my background is um, quite mixed and uh, I love that. Just as we see here in the allotment, I mean, I've been here looking and I'm very interested in permaculture. And I was thinking about my stories and I was thinking about what are my stories? Where do they come from? And they come from all of the seeds they were planted on me from my parents, my background, my family, and all of that, which is very combined. And the same thing happened in this place that I've created. Um, and I was thinking, how can I combine the principles of permaculture into what I do? And I think I already do it anyway, but it's how to continue to create a physical presence in times where that is not kind of wanted or we need it we need it as human beings I don't think this is a normal kind of new normal or anything like that it can't be we are you know we need physical contact we need interaction and I think that's one of the things why I felt here alive because I am actually in contact with nature and I have been physically touching and smelling the flowers and you can smell the mint and you can see the apples, you can pick the apples, pick, you know, raspberries and everything that you have here. So the future is that contact, that physical contact with, you know, with nature and the world and, and us and all of that. Um, I think the books in a way for a while or for now, the books are that physical connection that at the moment we can't quite have. Um, I always work with my mother. She's in Colombia with my sister and she runs the, they both run a, a dance school. And my mother is a writer and a poet and a teacher, an amazing teacher, is the person I started with learning theatre and dance and everything. And she has written all her life and I have worked with her stories, her poems forever since I came to England about in 85. Uh, thinking that, that translating the stories from Spanish to English creates a, a pathway and we need to create that bridge in order to connect us to other people and others because we are part of this massive um, environment that we need to look after like we need to look after each other and, 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 and nurture each other and, and I think that um, all these stories from different places enrich our mind and the more we know about other stories the better. La calle de San Bruno, Bogotá, 1975. La mujer corría como alma que lleva el diablo, persiguiendo a la niña ladrona. Ya cansada, la mujer con su corpulenta humanidad se detuvo para sentarse en el borde del andén. La niña que robó la manzana vivía en la calle de San Bruno, arriba en la loma del barrio de Egipto. Esa calle que parece no tener fin, llena de tugurios a lado y lado, donde pagan 100 pesos por una pieza. Allí las paredes son de cartón y el techo está hecho con latas. No hay agua ni energía. Algunos piratean los servicios o almacenan agua de lluvia. Un caño de aguas negras pasa por el frente. Los niños corretean todo el día. No van a la escuela, no tienen zapatos y visten con harapos. Se bañan solamente cuando llueve. Allí vive la niña ladrona. Le dicen la cabra, 
por los saltos que hace cuando huye despavorida por robar. Yo le diré Gacela, por sus piernas largas, su cabello color miel, sus ojos oblicuos amarillos de animalito asustado y salvaje. Esos ojos solo se cierran un poco para dormir en las noches. Ella vigila el sueño de sus hermanos pequeños. Si en las mañanas amanece sin nada para comer, sale a pedirle a cada vecino algo. Algunas veces le dan un trozo de panela. Los deberes de esta niña son muchos, con solo 12 años de edad. No solamente cuida a sus hermanos, tiene un padre paralítico que cuando puede hace cucharas de palo que la niña trata de vender a muy bajo precio. La madre los abandonó, se fue y nunca volvió. Era muy joven. Las tragedias en su barrio fueron muchas. Un incendio que terminó con la vida de un vecino. Un pequeño que murió al caer al caño cuando una avalancha de agua y lodo arrastró la mitad del barrio. Lo encontraron flotando. El corazón de la gacela se fue volviendo de piedra. No tuvo infancia. No pudo estudiar y nada de lo que debió tener como niña que era. Cuentan que años después se paraba en las esquinas muy maquillada, con ropa inapropiada para su edad y fumando no sé qué cosa. Apenas tenía 14 años. San Bruno Street, Bogotá, 1975. The woman was running as if the devil was after her soul, chasing the thief girl. Already worn out, the fat woman stopped to sit on the edge of the pavement. The girl who stole the apple lived on San Bruno Street. Up on the hill in the barrio Egipto, that street seems to have no end. Slums on each side, where you'll pay a hundred pesos for a room. There, the walls are made from cardboard and the roofs with cans. There is no water or energy. Some tap into the services or store rainwater. A sewage pipe passes in front of the barrio. The children run around all day. They don't go to school, don't have shoes and dress in rags. They only bathe when it rains. There lives the thick girl. They call her the goat from the jumps she makes when she runs off in terror after stealing. I will call her the gazelle for her long legs, her honey-colored hair, the yellow slanting eyes of a small and frightened wild animal. Those eyes only close a little to sleep at night. She watches over the sleep of her little brothers and sisters. If in the morning they wake up with nothing to eat, She goes out to ask each neighbor for something. Sometimes they give her a slice of sugary panela. This girl's responsibilities are many for a 12-year-old. Not only does she take care of her brothers, she has a disabled father who, when he can, makes wooden spoons that the girl tries to sell for beatings. The mother abandoned them She left and never returned. She was very young. The tragedies in her neighborhood were many. A fire that ended the life of a neighbor. A little boy who died when he fell into the sewer. When a flood of water and mud submerged half the neighborhood, they found him floating. The heart of the gazelle was turning to stone. She had no childhood. She couldn't study. She had nothing a child should have had. They say that years later, she hung around on street corners fully made up in clothes inappropriate for her age and smoking who knows what. She was barely 14 years old. Dejado esta 
noche Porque esta misma noche encontré el amor No me hubieras dejado esta noche Porque esta misma noche encontré el amor Me acogiste destrozada Y me devolviste entera En esta Me acogiste 